these days you've got to be careful uh, even filming yourself anywhere near kids playgrounds so what I want to talk about today kind of involves a little bit around that and how it rolls out into adulthood you know when uh, kids get in trouble we often hear it's not their fault it's their friends I mean I you know I went through it and I bet most people watching this went through it wasn't Tony fault it's those guys he hangs around with well you know it could be your freaking parents you hang around with that's causing a lot of the trouble in some cases not mine I don't think but could be and yeah sure I used to get in a lot of trouble as a kid but I used to hang around with guys that like to get in trouble because I thought that was cool so I want to talk about here is third party what do I mean by that it's back to that same circle of five and if you're sick of hearing about it there's a reason I keep going on about it it's the fucking truth the five people we spend the most time with are having the biggest influence on our lives. That time could be spent face to face, over the phone, watching videos, by text, by messenger, who knows, you know, Skype, whatever, you know, this day, technology now, who knows. So I remember my father always, when he was dying, wanting to get out of hospital, I just thought about something there. Going past Mount, Mount Sinai right now. I thought about something. I'm saying, like, I don't want to be here. It's full of sick people. It's going to kill me. And the people that visit them, all they want to talk about is sickness and illness. I want to get out of here. So there's a certain, uh, certain strength in that because my father's always the guy that defend me. It's not his fault, it's those guys he hangs around with. Well, Here's the reality. He let me hang around with those guys. You know, he never stopped me. So, who knows. But, it's not about me. It's about you. But it's not even about you. Is it about the five people you hang around with? The five you spend the most time with? It's not even about them. It's about the five that they spend the most time with. And those five who they spend the most time with. That's what's affecting you that's affecting me, that's affecting the five people I spend time with. How? It's the butterfly effect. You know what that is? Butterfly flaps its wings on one side of the other. The whole stuff of goes around, it's not going to go through now, but it can affect everything. It's the same with this. So, here's the reality. You're a kid. Eight years old, nine years old, ten years old, and you go to a new school, and you've got about four friends with you that go to that new school, but you make new friends. Are all your old friends in favour of that? Or does try, some of them try and say, oh, you don't want to hang around with those guys, you don't want to do that, stick with us, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, people that hold their growth, why? They don't want to lose you to your new friends. They might be set in their ways, or they might have their agenda, their path, their priority. It's not the same as yours. So that's just kids that happens. It's massive problem. Your old friends and your new friends. Your new friends. Oh, we can hear this, it's got a bit windy there. Your new friend, friend, friends, friends. Your new friends. I'm going to bring this close because of the wind. Your new friends are affected by your old friends. Now, translate that to adulthood. You got friends. And all of a sudden they get new friends or relationships or whatever. And by relationships, I don't just mean romances. It could be new jobs, could be anything. But you like your friends. And you want to keep your friends. So, subconsciously, 
we don't encourage our friends to associate with their new friends. This is blatantly obvious a lot of times in romances, relationships. I'm sure you know someone, male or female, makes no difference, that got involved with someone and then you never see them anymore. Think about that. Why is that? Is it your friend? Or is it your friend's new friend, their boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever? Think about it. You notice your friend's changing? Now, if they're not changing for the better, I've got some bad news for you. Your friend's new friend, relationship, whatever, is toxic towards you. Your new friend may not be aware of it. And they will do anything, including lie, to cover up for the fact that they are not in control of their own lives. Their date is, their relationship is, are controlling them, are pulling the strings. They will lie, they will let you down, they will do something in certain circumstances. Not in all, but it does happen. Because they then become people pleasers. They sit on the fence between both parties. And there's times in your life where you just got to say, fuck it, I'm done with them. It's not your friend you've fallen out with. It's not your friend you don't want to be with. It's the third party of the third party of the third party that's having an effect on you. And I can't afford that in my life. I'm building an ebook now, 30 days to being bulletproof. To be fucking bulletproof, you can't have those people anywhere near you. Anywhere near you. You can't touch them, you can't fucking smell them, you can't be near them. Beingbulletproof.info. You can't be near them. So if I'm putting a program together for others, how far do you think I have to distance myself from anything like that remotely? I walked out of a friend's apartment two weeks ago. Come over for a cup of tea. Yeah, sure. Make sure you turn the TV off before I get in the building. This may seem a little extreme. Yeah, 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 I'll do that. I buzz upstairs. Make sure you turn the TV off. I walk in. The TV's on. I said, I fucking told you I'm out of here. Bye. And he thought, I'm nuts. I cannot afford in my life to be anywhere near that toxic shit known as the media. Because if I watch one fucking program, the butterfly effect of that can affect who knows how many people. If I drop one stone in this ice, what will that affect? It will cause a ripple underneath. So, from Central Park, the wind's picking up and down. I'll give you a vista before we go. From Central Park, New York City. It's beautiful. Look at this sky. this building there? I don't know. But the one there, the tall one, with the little crane on top, that's the tallest residential building in the Western Hemisphere and the most expensive apartment in New York City is right on the top. That's Billionaire's Row down there. 110 million for an apartment. If you're interested, it's too late, it's gone. Guys, have a wonderful day. I'll leave you this parting shot.